or something happened or he did something out of his flesh. By the grace of God, I go. How about you? Amen. Some of us can't even contain our flesh in church, never mind out of church. <laughs> That's how strong it is. But God still loves us and he doesn't see us. Look, I'm blameless before God. Lord, you're blameless. Cindy, Eddie, Wayne, everybody in here is blameless before God. Amen. Doesn't see your faults anymore. So why are you seeing each other's faults? Amen. That's the problem. Why are you seeing your own faults and other people's instead of saying, you know what? I'm blameless. Amen. I don't have to. Done deal. That's peace. Amen. That's peace. When you can Amen. say, my wife will tell you, she, she tells me all these things, and I'm like, I don't even know. She says, well, how do you tune that out? I said, because I just give it to God. When you give something to God, I mean, it's a literal thing that has to happen. Yep. Okay, Lord, yeah. <laughs> and then what? Go to something else. Yep. Instead of dwelling on it. Yep. If you really gave it to God, then it's time to move on. Yep. God is so good. Look, he did this for us. Amen. Look, look what he says. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. You understand what Jesus did? We're adopted. <laughs> We're adopted into the family of Christ, God Hallelujah. through Jesus. If it wasn't for Jesus, we would never be adopted into the family. That's right. Look what it says. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. You know what pleased God to put you in his family? Hallelujah. Think about it. Me and his family, all the nasty things I did and all the nasty yeah. years of my life that I was against God, he decided that he wanted me in his family still. Think of how many things that people do in our family that they do to us that we can't forgive them. What they did to us in our family. We can't just erase it like God did. Well, what did you get out of it then? If you can't forgive, if you can't love and forgive people you can't see, how can you love a God who you can't see? Look. He adopted us. He, when I think about it, he adopted me into his family, he said, oh my goodness. <laughs> Nobody would put me up, would want to adopt me. <laughs> you know when they say, you know, those people that get it, oh, no, not that kid. You know? <laughs> the one that was living in the hut, whatever they were living for a long time, was so disobedient and rebellious. They said, all right, I'm going to let him come to my house. I'm going to adopt him. <sighs> God, take him. <laughs> I'm saying God could ad ad adopt a sinner like me into his family by believing in his son. Jesus wiped out, took all the hit for a lot. Think about your whole life and your sinful nature and the things that go through your head and went through your mind all these years. And God said, I don't care. You're in my family now. I don't see it. And I still don't see it. See, the problem is lack of understanding of God's work. Because when people sin, they see this sin, not the Son. See, when you sin and fail, you're supposed to look at Jesus, not the sin. He doesn't see your sins anymore. Get it through your head that God doesn't see your sins anymore. Does that mean that I keep sinning? No, there's always a consequence. Look, you don't get away with nothing. You always reap what you sow. I did a study on that. Don't be stupid and thinking that because he doesn't see your sin, that means I can sin it up. He doesn't see like he doesn't see him. He knows you're sinning. But he's not holding it against you. Stop holding things against yourself and other people. If there's people in your life that you're holding something against because of something they did, forgive them. You want peace in your life? Forgive them. You want peace in yourself? Forgive yourself for your wrongs. For the longest time, I couldn't forgive myself for the things that I did to my parents, to my friends, the sneakiness, the motives, the craziness I went through for all the years of all that disobedience and rebellion towards God. If I think about that stuff, it's shameful. God wiped it all away. Nailed it to the cross. Amen. The only way I could change that is what? Not repeating it. It's called repentance. Right? I don't do that anymore. I have a new condition, a new position in Christ. I'm, new, I'm born again. I don't have to do that anymore. 
Now look what it says. So we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us who belong to His dear Son. Look, He pours His grace out on us because we belong to His Son, not because we behave. Think about that. Do you believe that? Listen, do you believe that He pours His grace on you? Look, why? Because you belong to His Son, not because you behaved good today. Amen. Once you understand that, you say, look, I can behave good because I want to. Amen. Not because I have to. That's right. Grace is awesome. Grace is powerful. Amen. Now look what it says. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son. Listen to this now. Forget about the door. Look at what it's saying in the Bible. This is what the devil does. Look what he did. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son. And what did he do? He forgave our sins. Do you understand what he did? He forgave your sins. Past, present, and the ones you're going to continue to commit until you go home to be with him. Has not to see once you understand your position, then you can improve your condition to line up with your position. Once you understand that my, he's not holding my sins against me, and that's not stopping me from growing. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. How many of us beat ourselves up over our sins and stop growing spiritually? This can't be working. My flesh is so strong. Hello, I just explained to you that God chose you before he even created the world. Yeah, so he already knew that. He still chose you. Right. So stop thinking that he didn't. See, once you understand the foundation is solid, it can't be shaken by anything that you do, you can grow. Amen. And you grow, and I'm giving you some fertilizer, so you can grow. The fertilizing, the washing of the word is the word. When it says the washing, the washing is what? With the word of God. That washes out all the evil. Amen. The watering of the word. Now look what it says. He has, listen what he says. Now think about that. Anybody take a shower tonight? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> when you turn on the shower, all that water that comes rushing out of that shower head, Look what he said he did. Look how, th this is the analogy he said. Look, he has showered his kindness on us. Just imagine it, taking a shower in kindness. <laughs> a lot of us need it. A lot of us need a good shower of kindness. A lot of bitter Christians out there. They can't be kind to the un un lost and the miserable, self-centered, born-again believers that need showered kindness. You know what? They don't understand that they get showered with kindness. Amen. Yep. Look what it says. Along with all wisdom and understanding. Look, he's given us all wisdom and understanding. He's given us the ability to understand these truths. Yep. Amen. And he happened to give you someone that's going to help you Amen. understand them. Amen. That's why they have teachers and pastors. For what? To build and equip the church to let you understand these doctrines. So you can apply them to your life and understand your purpose here. Because if you just read the Bible from cover to cover and you don't break it up into the dispensations like it was supposed to, you can get all messed up in there. Right. We're in the age of grace right now, not under the law, under God's grace. Right. It said, when Jesus says, obey my commandments, is love God and love your neighbors yourself. Not go back to the Old Testament. Amen. There's commandments of love God. All them old things were because of love. Love doesn't commit any of that. But you have to understand that and it has to be broken down. It has to be taught. Amen. Now look what it says. God has now revealed to us his mysterious plans regarding Christ. What's not a mystery? It's something that's revealed now that wasn't revealed to the prophets in the Old Testament. That's what the mystery is. It wasn't revealed to them, right. the church. Right. It's revealed to us now, the church. Right. In most churches... They, they, they get back into, they stay in the book of Acts. They don't move on to the Pauline epistles because Paul's the only one who got that revelation of the mystery of the church. Paul the apostle got it. The other 12 didn't have it. Mm, that's right. 
They have, you have to move on through the whole epistle. You have to go to Acts, into Romans, all through them to understand the mystery and the grace of God, the dispensation of God's grace. Yeah. Or else you'll get stuck in all this other stuff. Yeah. Signs and wonders and feelings and emotions. Yeah. No, no. There's nothing emotional about the truths of God's word. It could give you a good, oh, wow, I really understand God's truth. You know when you got saved and you believed in? Yes. Oh, you felt great because you got truth. After a while, though, you know when somebody tells you the truth hurts? Well, that's what happens to believers, too. When the truth hits you in the face, it hurts. Before it was beautiful, now it hurts because, ooh, I got this ugly flesh. The truth is, I don't have to use it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ouch. So we still get angry because we're human. It's okay to get angry. Listen, all your emotions that come out in the course of a day, God doesn't care. You're still his child and he loves you. Amen. You do. You care. I feel this. I feel that. I feel depressed. I feel sad. I feel it. I feel it. Oh, I don't feel good today. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like going to work. You know what? By the time you're done with your feelings, you're calling in sick, you're not going to church, and you're actually, you actually start to actually be that way. Yeah. Because you're feeling that way. You actually start living that way. Yeah. Instead of living by what you believe. You can talk yourself sick. Yes. <laughs> oh, you, know, you wake up and your eyes say, oh, I'm tired. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. You just woke up. Yeah. Oh, I don't think I'm going to go to work today. It's been hot all week. <laughs> yeah. Somebody wants your job. Somebody will take it. Somebody will go out and sweat and take your job. Yeah. And then needs the money because you're just being ungrateful now. I think you have a sense of entitlement now because mm -hmm. it's warm. See, we don't understand. You go to work for Jesus. Yep. But God loves us. Look what it says. Look, regarding Christ, God has now revealed to us his mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill his own good pleasure. See, God wants to fulfill his purpose in your life, not yours. You see, you might feel a different purpose than his purpose. And you might fight against his, you can actually fight against God. What's his purpose for me? I want this. And God say, no, I want you to do this. This is my purpose for you. Not what you think it is. It's my purpose, not yours. The flesh is very deceiving, the Bible tells us. Yes. Now look what it says. And this is his plan. Wow, he's got a plan? Mm -hmm. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Look, if you think that you can bring everything into the authority in your flesh to Christ, well, then Jesus didn't have to come then if you could do it. Amen. He's going to do it. So stop trying you to do it. Amen. Look, you're not a savior. None of us are. There's only one savior. And it tells us, do you believe what this is? A lot of people don't believe the Word of God. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. The Word of God says, look, and this is the plan. At the right time, it's not the right time yet. That's why it hasn't happened. Yep. He will bring everything together. Look, every tongue will confess and every knee will bow eventually that Jesus is Lord. Yes. Will, you can't make that happen. Yep. Newsflash. You can't make them happy. You can try to make people bow and everything like that out of submission, but that's not their heart. Look, when God comes, He's not coming. When Jesus comes back, He's coming back with fire and judgment. Look, Jesus has got my back. I don't know. He's coming down. And I'm like, yeah, come on. I'm with you. I'm in your body. Amen. Amen. Come on. If Jesus is the head of the body, well, He's the one who has to lead. And if He ain't here yet, I'm waiting for my leader to come. Amen. And then I'll follow. Amen. I'm not trying to become the leader. He's the leader. Amen. People are nuts out there yep. thinking that they can make some kind of change. Look, I ain't seen anything getting better out there. No. With people with their, their ideas thinking they can change the world. No. <laughs> Amen. No, the only thing that can change the world is a changed heart. Amen. You know, prayer is more powerful than anything else. Amen. You pray for the people in authority mm -hmm. to get it right. 
Amen. You pray for the president. You might not like him. It doesn't matter. God put him there. Amen. Yeah. Amen. You might not like any of his ways. God still put him there. Yep. God put Nebuchadnezzar in front of all of them. He was nuts. Yeah. Yeah. He was nuts. Yeah. God put him there. Yeah. Yeah. Look. Read your Bible. God put the president in office. Yep. He put the politicians in. He put them all there. Yep. Yes. Whether you like it or not. Nothing could happen unless he might, because he can, he's in, listen. Amen. Jesus, look, if you want peace in your life, stop thinking about all that, because yep. that ain't going to give you no peace. Nope. Uh -huh. That's right. Think about when he comes, he will restore peace again. Yes, amen. He's the, uh, look, I, if the Bible tells us to think of things of heaven, not the things of earth. What do you think that means? How could you think of the things of heaven when you're trying to do something on earth? Amen. Lack of what? Intellectualism taken out of context instead of living by faith. And I'm waiting for Jesus. That's right. Amen. I can do what I can do. I can make a difference by living out my life as Christ. Amen. The rest is in God's hands. I'm going to have peace today. Amen. My wife will tell you when I get peace. I sit down and I'm like, I'm good. He says, nothing bothers you. Of course not, because like, because nothing. Jesus is, he's the one. Amen. He, he died to give me peace, so why am I not going to take it? Amen. That's right. It's up to you whether you take it or not. These are all gifts. Amen. You want peace, you have to take peace. You have to trust God's word. You have to learn the doctrines and say, all right, I know what my role is, and I know what his role is. He says he's going to bring everything. Look. Furthermore, because we are united with Christ, we have received an inheritance from God, for He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. Do you believe that? Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Whatever's going on in your life, it's His plan. He's going to work it out. Even the mess you made in your own life. Yeah. He's going to, if you love God, He's going to work it all out for good. Amen. Amen. If you don't love God, it ain't going to work out for good for you. Because some people's hearts get hardened yes. by their own mistakes. Yes. And God says, look, I'm not holding your mistakes against you. Why are you? We hold, we hold our mistakes against God. Say, why, why am I mad at God when I'm the one who made the mistake? Amen. God's given me free will to make stupid choices and good ones. Sometimes we wish he would just take us over, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of the devil. Yeah. Yeah. The flesh is strong. The, the, the devil loves our flesh. Yeah. Whenever we submit to our flesh, the devil says, yeah, I gotcha. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, but I come to church. Listen, I come to church and I read my Bible, but the devil's always winning. So then why are you coming to church if the devil's always winning? Yeah. Jesus came to overcome the power of the devil. Amen. That's why you're here, to overcome that power. But if you never use what you have, that's like me learning my trade and never using it. I have it, but I never use it, so guess what? I lose it. You have all these things, but if you don't use them, you lose them. Because he says, you know what it says in the Bible? I wanted to talk to you with spiritual, but I can't. i got to start all over again, because by the time you want to be teaching people, you're not. So you forgot everything. Yes. See, iron sharpens iron. When you teach, it keeps you fresh in the Word of God, so you keep knowing the doctrines. But if you just keep taking it in, taking it in, taking it in, never doing anything with it, you get nowhere. That's right. I, like I said, it's like being pregnant and not giving birth. <laughs> you come to church saying, well, I already know all that. Yeah? I already know that. Oh, I don't want to hear that again. No, you're not going to get anything more revealed to you until you actually do what's been revealed. Like, everything that's been revealed to you, if you want a, a higher revelation, you have to actually obey what you've been revealed to you already. And then you'll get deeper into it. Amen. People will, oh, I, don't, I know that already. Yeah, but I can't live it, so God's not going to reveal anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. So people go out to commentaries and other things and other books to try to get a deeper revelation. Right. What are you saying? <laughs> Hello? You don't even know how to love anybody. And you want something deeper. You can't love your enemies. You can't do good to those who persecute you. Why would I give you something else? When you haven't used them yet. When you get them down, then I'll give you some more. 
oh no, I'm going to close this. I need more revelation. I got to go to Dr. So and so. He knows more about this than I do. So I. No, the Bible says live, live like children of God. Amen. Once you get like that, and then you can grow some. Well, now I'll give you something deeper. That's right. Amen. <laughs> People just skip right over that. Look, the Bible is. The Bible is full of revelations. Yes. Yeah. You ever go in there and say, wow, I didn't know that before. Yeah. You know, yeah. you read yeah. right through it. So, you know, I didn't know the rainbow was a sign that God wasn't going to flood the earth anymore. Yeah. yeah. I never seen that before. Right? Then you see it the second time you read it again. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. And then you start questioning things. You know, why did God let out the raven and then the dove and then the raven never could talk about it again? You know, all this stuff. I don't even understand why yet because I guess it ain't ready to be revealed to me. Mm -hmm. But it's been making me think about it. Maybe I gotta stop stop doing some things before I get another revelation, right? Mm -hmm. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. I need to grow up. So I can get look, you, you need to get more capacity so you can handle it. Spiritual capacity. Look. Now look what it says. Chosen man, and he makes everything work out according to his plan. Now God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth of the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit. That's your identification. Amen. Now, oh, I don't feel the Holy Spirit. Well, there's not something flying around the room. That's right. <laughs> you have it. Look, are you believers around you? Amen. If you're a believer, this is what you have. This isn't something you work for. This is something you have. Look. He identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he had promised long ago. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. See it? He did this so we would praise and glorify Him. You see it? That Holy Spirit is a guarantee. That means we don't have everything. You can't, you're not going to get the full inheritance down here. That's right. You're not. This is just a deposit. The Holy Spirit is the down payment, the lock in, the seal. Yes. We're sealed with. See, you can't lose. See, this is what we're going to teach. You can't lose a gift. Because when the, when the Bible talks, when a king seals something, with his ring, it cannot be revoked. Yeah. Actually, one of the guys, uh, he made a promise to God that his daughter had to die. Yes. Yeah. And he couldn't revoke it. Yep. She had to die. So, you have to understand the Bible. You are sealed until you go home to be with him. Amen. That's so good because today I failed. How about you? Mm -hmm. Are you going to say, oh, I was perfect today. I thought about <laughs> Jesus all day, and I was so kind to everybody, even that rude person who wouldn't hold the door for me. <laughs> okay. Let's get real here, okay? This is a real church. This isn't some fake place that you come put on a face and everything went well today. No, today was, today was hot. I really was edgy and aggravated.